I might be the least qualified person to actually review Let Me Fantasy 3 backlight kit, but I'm going to do it. Hey guys, technically it's not the first time I'm actually driving lights in my scene dynamically. You already can see one of these that responds to the voice. My keyboard and mouse from Razer actually synchronizes with whatever's on the screen because, well, it's fancy even though it doesn't change anything. And I have a RGB light on top of my monitor to set the mood right. But what I don't have and what I haven't tried before is one of those fancy TV backlit uh, kits that you can use to enhance your viewing experience. So why am I so badly qualified to review this product? Well, it's all about how I consume my media. First of all, most of my media is being consumed on a projector, which naturally creates a very similar effect by bouncing the projected light all over the room. And I think that is kind of the impression all those ambient TV lights are going for. The second reason, I don't even watch that much TV, and when I do, I use the smart TV and the apps to stream the content instead. Which is not ideal, because Let Me Fantasy 3 actually uses HDMI pass-through to read the information about the screen color and replicate it in a highlight, or backlight, or ambient light, whatever you want to call it. So while I always wanted to try one and see if I gonna like it, up until now, I never had the opportunity. I was generally impressed in what's inside the box. You can pick your screen range size and the Litme will send you customized uh, light strip, RGB light strip, that uh, you don't have to cut to size or anything. Just stick it at the back of the monitor. There is also the main box, which allows you to input four different HDMI sources and there is a uh, additional fifth HDMI port for the output that you're going to connect to a TV. And the whole thing, it's small, powers the LED lights and connects to the internet as well. The box itself has a power button and orientation button for easy management, but majority of the settings are going to be done via app. Since I've got everything I need, I think we need to head to my TV room. And please don't shout at me. You can see uh, from where the TV is located and what is standing on and from the mess around it. I do not really care about the TV at all and it's just there for decoration. The setup is super quick thanks to the fact that the RGB strip has been managed for you. Now the strip lengths are adequate to your TV's size and you can pick anything from 50 to 90 inches which is generous. Uh, corners have been connected with a flexible wire so you could uh, wrap the strips correctly around your TV. Now bonus point is that you don't really have to follow any direction because you can change the direction of the RGB strip in the app. Super easy. In addition to that you have nice clear clips that you can use to secure the RGB strip to your TV and prevent the ends of the strip from peeling off. I also use those to cable manage those excess cable corners so they don't protrude from uh, the back of the TV. Overall, the installation took me around 10 minutes and I was ready to give it a go. The last step was to connect the USB Type-C connector to the box to power the LEDs. I like that they're using USB Type-C, it's very handy. And uh, plug in my input. As the Litme Fantasy 3 is using art support on their HDMI, it means that you will be able to actually get that box and maybe 3M tape it to the back of the TV because you'll never need to use that power button. The unit will power on and power off based on the HDMI input signal, which is super handy. Now pairing, it's that easy. Litme has a default app that you can use to actually connect to your strip and set up different uh, as this is a connected pass-through, and you're gonna need your phone to connect to the box itself and then set it up. Now, before you go and download dedicated LitMe app, which is handy and everything, if you want to use smart services like Alexa or Google Home and control the strip like you would control any other light in your house, don't download the LitMe app. In my experiments, I quickly discovered that Lit Me Up is a reskin of Tuya app. So they only use partial SDK to create a new app that will have one interface. 
but you can have exactly the same features and enable voice controls from smart assistants using Tuya app or smart home app, which is another reskin. I would suggest to you to use Tuya app because it's, well, better and has a more compatibility and you'll end up with exactly the same controls anyway. It takes only a couple of moments to set everything up. The box connects via Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz, the standard stuff, uh, to your internet, and then you'll be able to use a dedicated menu in Tuya app to control your newly created ambient display. At this stage, that choice is to be made because we have four different ways of driving that LED strip. First, the boring one. You can set a plain color. It acts like a bulb, so you can set the color via smart controls, using voice controls, etc. as long as you've got everything linked. So that's the first option and you're probably gonna never use it unless you want to integrate your TV in the part of your smart home setup and use it as a lighting, which you obviously can. Second choice is to use animated effects, which you have plenty of starting from like fireworks, animations, candles, etc. But those obviously going to be driving the strip without the input from your HDMI. Also cool, but not so trendy. This is not what we're going for, right? And third option is probably why you would get this to begin with, because you will use HDMI input to drive your LEDs and create the illusion of a much bigger screen. You can control the intensity of the brightness and how much diffused that colors are. It basically means how many pixels are being translated into an ambient light at the back. But that's not all, there is also a fourth option which will use sound coming from HDMI to display dynamic effects. And some of them are really cool. I know we already connected everything, but uh, at this point you might have a one tiny little question. There is a micro USB port also in a box and you probably don't know what to do with it because it's not mentioned in the instructions. This is stuff in development so Litme is not talking about it much but in future hopefully we're gonna have some functionality via TV, Android apps or similar. So fingers crossed that's gonna happen and we'll get to interact with your display in another way. It goes without saying that the best effects you're gonna achieve at night when it's dark and that backlight uh, is able to propagate the information from the screen on entire world behind TV. From the technical standpoint, the Let Me Fantasy Trick Kit is pretty impressive. It can grab the information from the streams up to 8K or 4K and 120Hz, which is plenty and I'll never have this content on my TV anyway, so that's fine. But the speed, responsiveness and the resolution of the light behind the TV is actually good. I haven't noticed any latency, the colors are matching on what I see on the screen and with a slider for the diffuse settings you can control how much of a spillover between different colors you've got behind your TV. Now from the viewer standpoint, well, it depends. But from the viewer standpoint, was it what I was expecting? When I was watching films with evenly lit scenes consistent throughout different cuts, then I could immerse myself in a TV viewing experience, enjoy the um, show, and actually the light coming from the back of my TV would complement that setup. But as soon as I changed over to action-packed uh, instances full of flickering lights, personally I found the viewing experience a little bit distracting. It was too much going on on TV and even more going on around the TV and everything was just reminding me of a 90s disco show. So for me, I don't know if I would get used to this over time, but uh, right now it's a kind of 50-50 split. So let's change the medium and jump into games. I've connected my laptop to the screen and give a go with a couple of games to see what would that be like when I'm actually playing a game. Strikingly, playing games with the same setup gave me much different experience. I was actively involved in the medium and I didn't mind the flicker as much, probably because my eyes were anticipating things since I had a control of the movement. Also, I think that in general the color palette of games changes slower than uh, in a film, so I think that flickering was much less pronounced. But either way, I found Let Me Fantasy Tree Kit to be excellent add-on for gaming and I'm actually looking forward for some game time when I get a TV properly set up. There is a one more option that I haven't talked about, which is a music pass-through. And while I have a decent soundbar with a subwoofer connected from Majority Audio, you can check it out here, uh, I don't really play 
that much music from it anyway, especially not through the TV. But I decided to give it a go and after checking a couple of different animations, I found one that worked really, really well. You have to admit that this is looking so cool. It creates a fancy ripple behind the screen driven by the music and loudness and I absolutely love it. That may give me an incentive to listen to music there from time to time. Let me asks anywhere between 160 pounds to 200 pounds depending on the length of the RGB strip. And you might think that this is a lot, but there's a couple of things to consider. You might be able to replicate the similar solution with something like a Raspberry Pi. However, it will probably be much slower in terms of response length and it's not going to handle the same refresh rates. And you won't be able to enjoy the creature comforts like selecting a default HDMI input or just switching on a fly from different sources while still using only one HDMI port on your TV. Now the biggest disadvantage is obviously the way you are consuming your media. Now for me, the Let Me Fantasy 3 kit is difficult to use because I'm so used to switching the streaming apps on my TV that I don't even think about it and it's been ages since I had my HDMI port populated. I think it goes without saying that's going to be the case for a lot of you out there. But if you are willing to rethink your strategy and maybe connect to your TV via Android Box, then all those Let Me Fantasy 3 features become finally available. With everything going digital, Kits like Let Me Fantasy 3 may not be the ideal choice for all the media. But if you are a person that enjoys occasional Blu-ray or DVD and actually uses HDMI ports on your TV, then a kit like that is an easy solution to create an amazing viewing experience as long as the rapidly changing backlight doesn't bother you that much. So if you are interested guys, in the description of this video you're gonna find a link to the product itself and a little bit more information, so do check it out. As for now, big thanks to Litme for sending me kits so I could talk about it with you and let me know what would you like to see next. I do not have a posting schedule, so you'll have to use YouTube tools provided to keep in touch or just follow me on a couple of social media accounts listed down below and get a conversation going. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.